Hello, you multi, multilicious, malt munching mumblers. Yeah, that's you. It's probably me as well. I do a lot of um, malt munching mumbles. <laughs> I also call them whiskey reviews. And thank you to Andreas Nijerman for the malt mention and uh, introducing. I better write this down to make it absolutely clear to myself and not get mixed up. Ralphie Review 923. Wonderful. I've just completed a series. So if you're sitting comfortably, just completed a series of standard cross section available official bottlings of single malt Scotch whiskey. And some of them were really good. The Craigellachie 17 year old was really good. And as happens, because I gave it a good mark, people around the world are just pumping the prices up, the bastards, on the back of my reviews. And I suppose it sh I should take it as a compliment that I'm being listened to, but frankly, it's not the sort of compliment I appreciate. It really isn't. Um, but anyway, there's nothing I can do about that. But what I can do is at the end of these, this series of uh, seven whiskies, and some were good and some were not good. Some, I just, if it had been down to me, I'd have never bought the bottle in the first place. Um, the two standouts for inferiority were Bowmore 15 year old and uh, Glen Grant uh, 15 year old batch strength, which was just appallingly badly made spirit in my opinion um, and here's the here's the rub is that the scotch whiskey industry really really gets an easy meal ticket don't they malt mates they get a real meal ticket with their batch variation because we're supposed to basically buy into their bottling blunders and inconsistencies because Technically, when you think about it, they're selling a product which is all about intrinsic quality of smell and taste. And when they don't fulfill their obligation in that respect, they're selling faulty goods. Am I wrong? Excuse me. <laughs> There's a bird in the roof, a big bird. It's probably a grouse. And, but at the same time, how can we complain because intrinsic quality of smell and taste can only ever be an opinion and our perspective. But at some point, someday, somebody still is going to get challenged on it and it may well go to court. That would be very interesting to see what happens there. In the meantime, having completed this series of official variable bottlings, which at times was pretty hard going, I have to say, um, I, I just want to change things. I just want to change. I want a alternative. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Oh, no, Ralphie, you're not going to review a rum. Switch off, switch off, unsubscribe, unsubscribe. We're only here for whiskey because whiskey's the only thing that matters. Bullshit, malt mates. Bullshit. I'm calling you out in this one. What matters is any spirit that provides relative value for money in terms of the quality of smell and taste that is provided. That is your remit, not a slave-like obsession to that entity which is Scotch whiskey, which in many instances deserves your, your attention, but sometimes it really just does not. So I'm going to review a rum a rum that I bought recently, and I'm really quite excited about it. It suddenly appeared in the London market, so I popped in and I bought a bottle. It wasn't super cheap, and far from it. But I'm not looking for super cheap. If I want super cheap, I'll go to the supermarket and wait till something's been discounted from the absurdly high price that it was to start with to make it look like a special offer. This is Beanley rum. Have I heard of Beanley Rum? Hmm? Have I heard of it? No. <laughs> this distillery's been on the go for quite a while. It was formed. Where's my steampunker? I love my steampunker. I've got to use my steampunker. 
Excuse me, I need to check my sounds on. I won't be a minute. It is. I'm kind of chilled out this way. Apart from doing edit, edit uh, not doing any editing to the videos, um, if there's something I need to distract myself about for a few seconds, I just go ahead and do it and leave it in the video. So what? Who cares? <laughs> This distillery oh, 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 has been on the go since 1884. I'll tell you something I did not know. This Australian distillery, uh, just north of the Gold Coast, is the oldest Australian rum distillery Royal Navy supplier in the tot era. Now, I thought all the Royal Navy tot rum came from Guyana and the Caribbean. But in fact, some of the Royal Navy taught rum has clearly come from Australia because Australia is an old rum making nation. Did you know that? No, neither did I. It's fascinating. Rum has got a great history. It's got a more colourful history and an older history than whiskey. What, what else can I tell you about this? Distilled in 2015, it is what's described as arid or desert maturation. It's just been distilled in a single column and then redistilled, so a second distillation in a copper pot still. It's been aged in first fill ex bourbon barrels for five years with an angel's share of 23%. It was distilled in 2015, bottled in 2021. It's aged five years and they're saying on the label, no sugar added. Unlike Scotch whiskey, because the E150 caramel colorant, yeah, is added sugar, isn't it? You hadn't looked at it that way before, had you? That's why you come to my channel, because you get slightly different perspectives. Distilled in our single column and pot still in December 2015, this rum has been aged in first fill ex bourbon American. Oh, American. They've had a spelling mistake. Oh, I love it. I love this even more. A nice, simple, old school spelling mistake. Uh, American, should be American, oak barrels in our warehouse in the Riverland region, South Australia. A unique arid desert climate with an angel share of 4% per year. This unique Australian environment delivers a signature profile and celebrate our real Australian spirit as we have since 1884 matured in the Liver Riverland region of South Australia. Now South Australia is basically... The distillery is located north of Sydney, just south of Brisbane just north of the Gold Coast and slightly inland, but not far inland. So that gives you a location. You can easily look it up in Google Maps. And this is bottled at 59%. A good, hefty, whacking 59%. So I would describe that as cask strength, wouldn't you? Lovely. Distilled and aged at the distillery. And it also describes it as a world premiere. Yeah, I can accept that. So how about the smell? There's a distinct Jamaican style funk going on in the background. These high ester fruity notes that you would associate with Hamden and to a certain extent, Ray and Nephew. Right? But there's something else, a distinct fruity note that you don't find in Jamaican rum. And one of the fruits that I'm picking out really clearly is rose hip and apricot. It says almost a combination of the two, rose hip and apricot. There's a distinctive honeyed vanilla note. The nose is rich textured. You can immediately tell this is a sugar-based spirit that's been made. 
and made very, very well. The quality of the nose is putting a number of Scotch whisky distilleries to shame. This is why alternatives are important. But I already know, as soon as, as, soon as about half of you realised this wasn't our whisky review, you switched off because you weren't interested. For those remaining, stick with me because I'm going to take you further on the journey. Where others give up, others carry on and are rewarded in that journey. Stick with me. Taste. It's cask strength. Crisp. Apple. Banana. An almost effervescent apricot. Caramac. Lime. Lemon. More banana. Baked banana. Toasted banana. Pan fried banana. All sorts of banana variations. What a busy, busy palate. And the thing is, at 59%, you might be expecting a firecracker at five years old, but it's not the case because this has been tropical region maturation. And so the five years, you can more or less recalibrate to 15 years in terms of a Scotch whiskey. I'm adding a full five milliliter teaspoon of water. Already I'm tasting a rum I've never tasted before. It's genuinely exciting. It is really refreshing my palate. And at times when I'm getting a little bit jaded with Scotch whiskey, I am absolutely delighted to have a few of these kind of bottles around, whether it be rum or my other favourite, which is Mezcal, particularly Chichicapa. And it just basically restores, it restores the balance and the force. It really, really does. Now I've just given it a few minutes, I could give it longer, but let's go back into the nose. Rich, complex, integrated, deep, excellent quality. Seriously good quality rum. As good as any other rum I've ever tasted. It's got that almost an Armagnac or Calvados aroma about it of super toasted, almost barbecued, russet apples. Loads of spice going on in the background. Nothing prominent, nothing up front. All spice. Cardamom, star anise, and a little bit of mintiness, something green and herbaceous. The sweetness that you'd expect from a rum is so well transfused throughout the, the flavours that it never imposes itself in any way as a sweetness. It just doesn't. with water, effervescent, just explodes in the palate, rich, complex, warming, the perfect balance of sweetness and sour, a little bit of bitterness in the outskirts, a little bit of dryness, a tang of saltiness. All the bases are covered with the sensations. You only get that with properly made old school spirit. And uh, this is exceptional. It's wonderful, but you know, it's wonderful for me as a pretty jaded old whiskey hack. I mean, it's been 40 year or 40 odd years. You know, sometimes you just, you just kind of want to walk away from it. Sometimes. And you pick up something else, an unusual spirit, a different spirit that you've you've not come across, and you just go, you do your research, you check out the reviews, you follow your hunches, and then you go for it, and then you come up with something like this, 
an absolute cracker, 90 out of 100. It's a rum mark. It's an integrity rum mark. It's an integrity rum mark. This isn't chill filtered. No chance, it's not chill filtered. To get that range of flavour, to get that complexity, that, that juxtaposition of subtlety and yet enforced full-on flavour, uh, you'd lose that with filtration. Um, so it's been basically barrier filtered and it's pretty amazing stuff to be honest. But for all the whiskey drinkers that never touch rum because it's not as good. They've already left. They've already left the, uh, the boffy. So for those of you who have remained, look out for something like this. A variation, a permutation of this. Um, you will not be disappointed. Things are happening very slow in the rum world in, in, in terms of their catering to, to whiskey drinkers. They're very conservative, very slow to change generally. And they're busy bottling at 40% with added sugar, really screwing up their product, downsizing their reputation, making a balls of it. Um, well, let them get on with it. But for the rum distillers that have the vision, the foresight, who invest in the quality of what they produce, we're sitting here waiting. And when we're waiting, we're buying. And when we're buying, we're reviewing and we're sharing. We're sharing the love. End of. Pop back again for Ralphie Review, 923 extras, in which I shall be giving a more general overview on affordable good quality rums because they are out there but you do know you do need to know where to find them i shall give you helpful handy hints stay tuned malt mates for my extras coming up shortly over and out yo ho ho